Welcome everyone to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. I am thrilled to have you here and even more so I'm very excited to chat with my guest who I think is going to offer some really beautiful insights to spiritual growth, spiritual paths, awakening, uh, you name it. Uh, Christina Beattie is here and she is an intuitive coach and channeler amongst many other things. And so I'm very happy to welcome her to the show. Welcome. Yay. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> yes, this is fantastic. This, you know, honestly, this has been a long time coming because you've been on my mind to have you on the show for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I kept meaning to reach out, kept meaning to reach out. And then finally, it's like, you know, I'd be thinking of it when I was driving and then I'd finish driving and I would forget or I'd be doing something else. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do it. But I imagine there's something very divine about it happening now. Yeah. I, I think, you know, when you reached out, I was like, wow, this is, it just feels very synchronistic and where I'm at in my life right now and just what I've been stepping more into. And mm. yeah, I always feel like there's a reason why these things happen when they do. Yeah. And it feels right right now. Amazing. It does. So let's talk about a little bit what you do first before we get into your story. What do you do? Because you do like Akashic Record reading, soul readings. How about you? What is it that your intuitive coach and channeling offerings are? Yeah. So I kind of like to think of myself as a jack of all trades because um, I do offer a lot of different pieces with clients. So I think what a lot of my clients know me most for is my Akashic Records soul readings. And so within these sessions, we tap into your Akashic Records and help you find clarity and guidance on lots of deeper pieces with your soul journey. So karmic lessons, past lives, um, soul contracts that you have with other souls in this life and others. And then I also offer intuitive guidance sessions with spirit. And these are really designed to help clients connect more with their spirit team, also build a deeper connection within themselves and their own intuition. Um, and then I also offer coaching in different forms. So whether it's like a one-to-one -one session to help you tap more into deeper pieces showing up that you need help with, or through the programs that I offer, usually themed around helping you develop your intuition or discover your purpose. But, you know, essentially at the core of what I do is helping you come home to your power. That is, mm -hmm. that is my purpose that I know I'm here to discover and continue to step into with myself and also with the work I do with others. Because mm -hmm. you definitely have been stepping into your power significantly over the last couple of years. I know we've talked a couple of times, but also in just watching the beautiful things you share on social media, like how you share your story of growth and um, like you're very transparent mm -hmm. in what you share as well, which makes it so real and so helpful for other people. So let's talk about a little bit, like what brought you to your journey of awakening? Mm -hmm. What's your yeah. story? <laughs> yeah, because it's been an interesting journey. I if you had known me 10 years ago, I'm a, you know, it's funny, I say I'm a completely different person now, but the truth is I'm actually more of who I am now than mm -hmm. I've ever been in my whole life. And prior, this is really shifted for me after I had kids, because prior to having kids, I was a high school teacher, which I really loved. I, I, I really loved it and, it. and it was definitely the right path for me at that time. But when I had kids, something really big shifted. And I'm sure a lot of other moms and parents feel this. Something can shift in you. And after I had Max and Zoe, and I was a new mom of two, I really hit a deep mental health rock bottom. And I felt like I had lost complete control of everything, um, which I had. But I, I now can see I was always operating, trying to control everything outside of me. And then I got to this point on my journey with my mental health, I couldn't control everything. And, you know, I, I have a, a core memory of lying on the ground in my bedroom as a new mom, really feeling so lost and hopeless and in this place of despair. And I remember Oh, being in this space and, and looking up. And at this time, I had never really had a spiritual connection. It was about eight years ago, or no, six years ago. And I said, if anything is out there, I need help. 
because I don't know what to do anymore. And, you know, it, it, it sounds, it sounds, I guess, maybe not real, but, but in that moment, I, I started to hear this really quiet voice inside of me that started to gently guide me, a voice that I had never felt connected to or had heard before. And it, it started to guide me. And I can now see that that was the first time I really truly heard my intuition or perhaps my soul. And I started to listen to it. And it really began to lead me down this path of not just deep, deep inner healing of like, read that book, have that conversation with that person, um, connect with that practitioner, do that course, it started to lead me down that path. But more importantly, it started to open up this space within me, this channel to this deeper power, my intuition, my soul, whatever someone wants to refer to it as. And that's really where also my spiritual connection began to began to develop. And, you know, I really started to have some profound experiences, which I'm sure we can dive into. Um, but it was the beginning of all of this for me. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So what, what, uh, if you want to share, what were some of the profound experiences? Because we all have opportunities for profound ones, and sometimes they can be a massive life altering event, right? The death of somebody or the loss of something. And sometimes though, on the surface, they might seem so small, but yeah. they're so profound. Yeah. So, um, are there any that you wish to share? Yeah. So, so there there were two big pieces I can see when I look back that played a big part in what was my spiritual awakening at that time. One was the passing of my grandpa, who my grandpa and I always had a very special connection, um, especially to music. And I would play the piano for him. And, and I can now see growing up, like we would have these moments of deep presence, you know, and, and after I lost my grandpa during that time, he started to come through to me in my dreams, which to me didn't seem too out of the ordinary, but then he also started to come through to me in meditation. And what stood out to me was actually what he was communicating to me. So he would tell me these different things, or he would show me through, through visions, these different pieces. And I would communicate this to my dad afterwards, who was his dad. And my dad would say, how do you know that? Like, you weren't alive when that happened or that I was a kid when that happened. And so I began to realize that something bigger was, was happening here. And it was interesting because prior to my spiritual awakening, I was the skeptic in the room. You know, you would say something, I'd be like, oh, I don't know about that. Right. Yeah. And so it was interesting that this was happening to me of all people. Right. Yes. And so that was one big piece was my grandpa very much ushered in this, this new path for me. And I think that had to occur because he was such a safe space for me. And so the things I was experiencing, knowing his energy was with me, I think allowed for that deeper reassurance. And then another really big thing that happened at that time was I had dinner with a couple girlfriends, just a random night. We were out sitting on one of their patios and I was telling them about what I was experiencing with my grandpa. And they kind of brought up nonchalantly, well, can you connect with other people who have passed? And I was like, I don't know. Like, I, this is the first time I've ever done this. And so they said, well, let's let's see. And it was very much like a, okay, we didn't mm -hmm. really have any expectations. And what occurred over the course of the next couple hours was actually multiple past loved ones in their lives coming through, showing me very specific things I had never met these people, I actually had my eyes closed while I was saying what I was receiving. So I didn't want to see their expressions and mm -hmm. they weren't saying anything. It was just me saying everything I was seeing and receiving and the, the details that were coming through. When I opened my eyes, they're both bawling their eyes out. Oh my gosh, that was my grandma. That was my uncle, you know, and one really specific thing that came through with my girlfriend's uncle that she's, she said was okay to share. Um, he was showing himself walking towards the sunset. He he was walking with his motorcycle and he had his gear on. And she said to me afterwards that when he talked about heaven, he explained that vision when he was here. And so it was just these mm. 
you know, these details that were coming through that I couldn't explain. And that those were, those were some really big shifts for me was, yeah. Yeah. yeah kind of uh, undeniable. You can't go back from that, right? Like it was yeah. too big for you and your, your consciousness and those validity pieces. And I think that's a neat thing because for a lot of people, when the timing is right for that awakening, mm-hmm. there will be these validity pieces that can come in many different ways, but like that you can't deny, right? You can't deny that you saw that imagery, you explained it, and it was something you couldn't have known yeah. before, yeah. right? That's that's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So now that you've been kind of like diving in and listening to this inner voice of your soul um, and working with people, where do you think some of the biggest blocks are for people opening up, whether that's in retrospect to your own blocks? Like, we have these awakening experiences, but then there's the like recalibrating your life to that. And there's a push, pull, push, pull. Mm-hmm. What were, maybe we could start with what were some of the blocks that you had to overcome mm-hmm. in getting to where you are now? Yeah. So working through my pain has been a really big piece in that. And I can now see in retrospect, as I look back, I didn't have any expectations around what that meant in doing that. Like I was simply just doing the work because it felt better to heal through a lot of those pieces. But when I look back, I can see that in going within myself and moving through a lot of these deep energetic blocks and and stuck pain, emotional pain that was in me, I was clearing a channel within myself to not only be able to hear my intuition, but trust myself. And that is one piece that I can see, not just on my own journey, but also working with clients is when we begin to trust ourselves, that's also when we also can build this muscle within us of our intuition and receiving and communicating what we're receiving. And yeah, it's like this, this, this trust muscle that we build, but I think that we can't necessarily learn how to trust ourselves until we go within and validate what we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally. And a lot of that also, then we have to sift through or move through pain points, Mm -hmm. which can be deeply uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. But then deeply releasing. Yeah. And, and also then when we do move through those pieces, we see, oh, I can do this or not just, I can do it, but no matter then what I come up against, I've done this before. And so there's also that, that reinforced Mm -hmm. trust. Yeah. That's a good point. I love that you brought that up is that I've done this before Mm because once you do it one time, you've created a template that can kind of be aligned in the next time and the next time to help you build that trust. I love how you describe that. Yeah. And that's something that I've also been shown a lot, not just with myself, but, but client sessions as well, whether it's in the records or with spirit, like the hard stuff isn't supposed to stop, you know, like we come here as souls to have this human experience, but the hard stuff is part of that because we, on a soul level, we choose to want to expand through the hard stuff. Mm-hmm. It's actually like when we can equip ourselves with these tools and the prior knowledge of what we've been through and the experience, then the hard stuff, we just get better at moving through it. Yeah. That's such a good point. We do that. I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, with that hard stuff. So for people listening, when they come across those moments of like, Oh, I don't know if I want to dive into this. Mm-hmm. What are some of your go-to techniques or mm-hmm. things to help someone find presence in that moment? Yeah. I mean, definitely breath. So whether that's, you know, breath work has been a big piece for me on my journey and you can find lots of free breath work. Like it doesn't always have to be something you pay for, mm-hmm. but, but any way of, um, returning to breath, I find, and, you know, with breath, it also allows us to become present in our bodies in, in the present moment, which can take us out of our head because our head is where we spin in those stories when we're in it sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, definitely the spiritual connection piece, like in whatever way that looks, you know, if you're listening to this and maybe you don't have that yet, there's so many ways that we can develop that connection, whether Mm -hmm. it's connecting with past loved ones or 
you know, intentionally wanting to learn more about our, our spirit guides, our spirit team, or learning about the records or like all of it can be so supportive when we're in the mm. thick of it. Yeah. And just remembering that we're not alone in that. Yeah. That can be really, you know, this human experience can feel really isolating sometimes. And it's true. Like any other human isn't going to know exactly what we're going through, but our spirit team is always there with us and the spirit realm. And, and yeah, I think really just forging that connection can be so helpful. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of your spirit team, Mm because I know I get this question sometimes too, and it can look different all the time. Mm -hmm. When you connect to your spirit team, do you see them? Do you hear them? Do you feel them? Is it predominantly one over the other? Does it change? Like what is, what is your experience like in your connection? Yeah. So it depends like, and, and this is where I think I have learned over the years, my intention with it, because I can ask very specifically, if I want to learn information about them, they'll show it if I'm ready for it. Mm -hmm. Um, One interesting thing though, that I found is I will have different guides depending on what I'm going through and what I'm needing at that time in my life. So my grandpa was a really big guide for me at one time. And it's not that he's not still here with me, but other, other guides have now stepped up to help Mm -hmm. me with different pieces. And so more recently, actually, in J- since January, so over the course of the last four months, I actually, um, and this is a whole other piece, but I actually mm-hmm. went through a really deep Kundalini activation and through that process. And since then, I've been connecting a lot with Mary Magdalene. And so mm-hmm. she's become a really big guide for me. And I've been channeling a lot of her teachings for myself and in the work I've been doing. But all of that to say, our guides, I think, can shift depending on what we're moving through. And sometimes we can have many at once. Um, For a while I was going into the Akashic records and I was receiving a lot from the pinnacle at that time. But again, it just, I find it can shift Mm -hmm. depending on what we're going through. Right. And when you say the pinnacle, what is that? Yeah. So this is, since I've been working in the records at the beginning of my journey, learning about the records, I actually used a book. I'm trying to see if I have it. I do have it. So the first time I ever accessed the records, I used Linda Howe's book to to access. And then as I got used to that and, and I really became more comfortable with it, I actually then began to use another woman's prayer. I did her program. Um, her name is Ashley Himalayan. Um, and I've really connected with her work over the years. And so I started, I did her program and I began to connect with that. And since I began doing her work in her prayer, she connects with the pinnacle, which I think can be similar for you with like the council of light, I think is a, Mm -hmm. um, and so the pinnacle is what feels like, I guess, a council or a group of light beings that provide, channeled guidance and messages Mm -hmm. now what's interesting is as I begin as I'm beginning to deepen more and more and more into my power over the last few months I've been getting guidance to now be ready to channel my own prayer which feels very exciting Mm -hmm. um and it's sort of like a full circle moment and that so that might shift I may not connect with the pinnacle anymore that might look different um but I think that's also a lesson in as we expand and develop, and maybe you've had this on your journey, things shift. And and as we step more into our power, we're asked to, I think, hold more. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely resonates. And it resonates with how guides change depending what you're going through and, and your pathway into um, where you go change it. Like it's, it's ever growing. It's ever growing and ever evolving. Yeah. So yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, So considering you've been tapping in, in all these different ways, Mm -hmm. what are you getting from spirit in terms of humanity's growth now? Because, you know, we're in 2024, this is a fast paced year. We've gone through the, as my guides explained, a hundred years of growth in four years from 2020 up until 2024. Now we're in like full speed shift and change. Um, is that, first of all, is that similar to what you're getting? And second of all, what are your guides showing for humanity? 
Mm. I know that's really broad, but like in that realm, what do you get? So what I'm, what I feel like I'm picking up and it's funny because I often say like life imitates art or the other way around. I often find that what comes through with client readings might be something I'm also going through, or you can feel it in the collective because the energy is, Mm -hmm. see it in layers in different ways. One thing that's been showing a lot showing up a lot is this piece around fear and not succumbing to the fear because there can be a lot of fear-based programming out there as souls are continuing to awaken as we're continuing to evolve and expand into our trust into our power there's going to be and continue to be a lot more I think fear that comes up that we're meant to transcend and transmute through and you know, what's interesting is for the people who are resisting their growth, their expansion, it's probably going to get more uncomfortable because this is what we're meant to be moving through and expanding through Mm -hmm. for the people who are choosing to do the work. We're going to be able to move through it more seamlessly. Mm -hmm. I think this connects to what I said earlier, like the hard stuff doesn't stop, but when we're doing the work, we can flow through it more effortlessly, not effortlessly, but with more tools and more awareness. And I think, you know, even just this eclipse that's showing up the intensity of the energy, if you're doing your work, if you're looking at your own pain, your own stuff that's showing up, it's not that it's going to be harder. You might feel it more intensely, but you'll move through it probably quicker. Mm -hmm. But for people who aren't, it's going to feel like it's going to feel probably harder. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That I mean, it resonates with what I get too. And and so do you, from your perspective, feel that humanity has a lot of hope to succeed? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It's I funny, do. I get asked this a lot. Like, and I think as a mom, as a parent, like seeing the world that is showing up right now and the kids growing up in it, I do have a lot of hope. And maybe this is also because of the work that I do with clients and I see, Mm -hmm. you know, the people who are open to expansion and growth and change and shifting cycles and patterns. I do. And I think that it can be hard when you look out into the world and see a lot of the things that are happening. But I think this is also where boundaries is so important and like what we allow our energy to be in or what we consume, what we watch. And it's not that we shouldn't have an awareness of what's going on in the world, but not allowing the energy of that to take over what is showing up in in small ways mm-hmm. in the present moment, in, yeah, in the light that is occurring. I think it can can be easy to forget that or see that if we become too consumed by what's going on out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand. I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Yeah. Um, So, okay. I have one other question, but it's coming from my guides. Hold on. Let me just tune in here for one sec. Okay. What, so this is their words, what medicine do you observe is needed for the heart? Of course they would ask that because (laughs) I've been in a massive heart opening recently. Oh, really? Okay. Because they're like, she will know, like ask her. It's been such a big piece of probably the last month for me is like this really intense heart activation. It's, you know, as a side note, it's, it's funny. I actually did a, a really transformative combo retreat last week or last weekend it's um I mean that's a whole other thing but I had this really intense heart activation at the end of it and I like couldn't stop sobbing Mm -hmm. but it was really good tears Mm -hmm. um you know something really big for me when it's been coming to allowing myself to feel more and really tap more into my heart space is presence Mm. and it's about and this can be hard sometimes in the world we live in and just everything going on in our phones and all of it but I have made especially over the last month 
becoming present a really important intention for me and you know reminding myself each day be present like can I be present in this moment and and just like really building the awareness of that and that in itself has created such big shifts for me because this moment is all we really have you know we get stuck in the past we get we we worry about the future but none of that is actually real and the more that I have actually been able to be present especially over the last month I've really noticed this it's actually shifted so much of what I experience and the more that I've been able to be present in this moment here the more I've been able to if you're if you're really into manifestation you'll love this the more I've been able to call in more of what I want because it's opened up my ability to be able to hold and receive. You know, when we can be present here, we can hold and receive more of what we want in this present moment. And it actually dissolves more of that ego, which takes us away from the present moment, which separates yeah. us. Yeah, that's presence is a big thing. And, and it's so interesting because we, we are so easily distracted from presence and we also and like I do this too at times when I'm not being conscious with myself I will choose distraction mm. right it's not only just being distracted but then we also sometimes choose distraction instead of stopping and being present in yeah. whatever it is in that moment so I think that's a really nice key piece is to like find that presence how can I be present in this minute or these five minutes or I have half an hour or whatever that is yeah yeah, yeah. And, and I think to add to that also being present if it's something really hard showing up you know like I think we want to be like present for the deep connection and the joy and the but that's something I've also learned is I can only hold that joy and that connection and that gratitude as much as I can hold my pain Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, if we take it back to big pieces, I've learned because I've been able to be with my pain and, and, you know, really look at the uncomfortable stuff and move through it. I think that's also why I can hold more joy and mm -hmm. gratitude and absolutely, awe. yeah, absolutely pain will block the bandwidth yeah. for joy. Yeah. That's stunning. I love this. Mm -hmm. So now, how can people work with you? Like, how can people get a hold of you? Where do they find you? Yeah, so so Instagram is where I spend a lot of time. I really, I really love my community on Instagram. And, you know, I think that does go back to me sharing my journey so much is because mm -hmm. that's something that really inspires me is, is sharing the truth of what I am experiencing in any moment, whether it's I want to sing, I want to cry, I want to scream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so my community on Instagram, love, love, love. So definitely you can find me there. I have an account on TikTok as well, which I, I share a lot of pieces there. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to connect with me, if you want to see what I'm up to, um, Instagram. So my, my name is at Christina dot soul empowered, exactly how it sounds. <laughs> and I'll have all the links too. Yeah. And in terms of, uh, did you ask how they can work as well? So yeah. the work that we can do together, you know, whether you're wanting more guidance in your life, this could be something we could tap into within your Akashic records in a soul reading or an intuitive guidance session with spirit. If you're wanting to go deeper, this is where the one-to-one -one coaching that I provide and the programs that I do. So I've currently actually got a program running. It's open enrollment, so anybody can join. And it's all about helping you tap into your power and discover your purpose in your life. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. And I mean, that's so wonderful that you're offering that and that people are offering all of these different pathways to mm -hmm. find self, right? Because as you know, there isn't one single way and the way evolves and grows and all of that. So that's amazing. I Like I said, I'll put all the links in the description below for people. Um, but just before we wrap up here, um, do you have any soul messages or guided messages or anything like that for people to carry on through this year? Mm. Okay, let me just 
Oh, let me just tap in and see what wants to come through. Yeah, so one thing that's been coming up a lot is, and, and they're they're kind of reiterating it as well, is this piece around trust and really just trusting, not just the hard pieces that show up and the challenges and the discomfort and the things that don't go your way. You know, they, there's there's always a divine plan and timing involved. But also this piece around, and this is something I've been really tapping tapping into lately as well, is self-expression. Like trusting what's showing up for you, trusting what you're feeling, trusting what you want to say, what you want to voice, how you want to express yourself, what feels really good. And that feels like it's going to be something that shows up a lot this year for a lot of people is, okay, now that you know how something feels for you, now how are you going to express that? How are you going to choose to communicate that and really show up more authentically in your light? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I agree 1000%. I love that message. That fills my heart too. So thank you. Thank you for that. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This is just so lovely. And your energy and your essence too, like even beyond the words, your energy that you're sharing is just so palpable. And I know people will be able to feel that as well. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. And and I want to say thank you because you and I've talked so much over the years and you have definitely been massively expanding for me in just feeling comfortable stepping into my light because it can feel scary, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we get these callings to do something that's a little outside of the box. <laughs> yes. And Although I think we're not supposed to be in the box anyways. But I know, right? Yes, yeah, so, that's true. But we've, you and I have had lots of conversations over the years where you've really supported me and, you know, the uncertainty of everything on the path. And so I just appreciate your energy in my life. So thank you. That's so sweet. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, thank you all for listening and for joining. Definitely check out Christina's stuff her page, her videos, like there's continual information, insight, shares on there. That's just heart filling and stuff to help you ponder and all of that. So I encourage you all to check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate you big time and I'll be back again next week. Have a good one.